Hi, so if you've seen some of my recent videos, then you'll know that I've been looking at um, AI for 3D. So like prompting, text prompting, image prompting. So it's all taking off now with, you know, AI for um, 3D has been around for a while, but now a lot of companies like Fondant, for example, who have asked me to look at their, um, their app um, online um, is kind of taking off. So it's very user friendly. We don't have to go to GitHub and install things on GitHub, which I found really annoying anyway. So I just want to go straight to making, trying out AI to 3D. So you can hear, you can see some examples from other users. And if I hover over it, it's got the prompt. So this, a ring from Mordor, that's all it's made from. Um, the company is um, Anna, Anna Tatelt's DBA Fond and Design. Um, I don't know where they're harvesting the data for 3D from. Um, yeah, that's AI companies. Obviously, it's useful to know that, but I'm sure it's fine. And here we've got, if you hover over, you've got previews of some images that I made already. And you can see, I just typed there alien rocks, alien leaf high mesh, um, dome high detail. So obviously the, um, what's it there? Use, I'm trying to use an academic word, but no, let's just use the normal word. Um, you know, the sort of words related to, you know, the lang the prompt language for 3D will probably differ to from 2D as it evolves. You know, things like high detail, high texture, that kind of thing. So here are all the prompt ones I made. Um, I can create a new one and give it a title and here's the text prompt, type whatever. And the additional settings, the only thing at the moment's got to seed, but this is all in development. And as Fondant told me, this is kind of in development. Um, it'd be good, to, obviously, in the future to have an image prompt so you can kind of control nets there. You know, you can control the 3D shape from an image as well as a prompt. I think that's the golden fleece or whatever we could call it. Um, so th these are all the models I made previously. They're quite cartoony, they're interesting, they've got the kind of style. Um, it'd be nice to see a sort of variation on styles. Perhaps the seed is, needs adjusting, but these ferns are nice. And um, these previews look slightly better than the actual mesh when you actually see it, you know, or, or import it, but we'll see that. But that's, as I say, it's all in development. <clears throat> that's the library. Okay, here's, here's this. I'm not sure if they've changed this grid, but that's the actual model in preview that you can look at as well. And then you can go to export and um, I exported mine to this scene here, but we'll look at that in a minute. And I'm gonna go to new and um, in the scene, I'll import one of the objects. So I'm gonna import a space person or space man or space woman object. Where is it? Okay. And I'm gonna go to fondant and I'll find the object which I was there and I'm gonna just go to so it's an OBJ file and there's the textures there I'll click on that it's come through the wrong angle hasn't it so I'll do R X minus 90 and <clears throat> excuse me as you can see the the mesh is very very bumpy it's almost like a very rough photogrammetry scan there are ways you can get around this so what one I usually do is firstly I go to edit mode I select all I press F3 and I merge by distance. So that's, um, you know, it's basically a weld merge if you're using other software. Um, and I've just got a very slight weld there. Um, in Max, it's weld by distance. So, you know, other programs are like that. I'm gonna go to modifiers. Another thing I can do is I can go to smooth and I can crank this up to about 1.5 and then do a repeat on it and that'll smooth it as well. But to get really, really high, um, to really, optimize this mesh and make it good you'd have to go to things like sculpt mode and um, smooth it you know so it sort of smooths it and then tweak the shape but it's not coming in perfect it'd be great if it came in perfect but that's probably only a few months or a year up the line if we go to the um, texture shader we can see that it's actually made a texture it's amazing and obviously this texture could be worked on we could take this to substance painter with the mesh on it or even substance sampler just to add some quick normal maps and things like that Obviously, we don't want this too shiny and that kind of thing. Um, what I also did is, um, although the mesh is a bit non-symmetrical, and again, that's something we could work on. You could you could take out half of it and then mirror it. What I actually did is actually added uh, um, a basic human rig, and we can see this in the the scene, that I, the quick scene that I made. So let's make the quick space scene. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the rig. Oops, select space person. And I'm gonna click on that, show overlays, and we've got the rig here. Okay, so it's a very quick rig and it's very rough. 
go to pose mode if I move it you can see I haven't even bothered to weight paint it I just wanted to move you know the arms very roughly just to see how quickly a scene like this could be built up and obviously again the topology of the model really needs to be worked on to make it kind of production quality um, let's um, just go to up to material preview and I'm going to press zero and um, press N to get rid of the end panel and I'll click off overlays which is a useful thing to click off when we want to see it in full it doesn't have the sky so I need to take it to full-on render and now it's got the sky and you know there's things like the shuttle in the backgrounds here that I can move around um, just I'm still in pose mode so I come out of pose mode and I'll just move the shuttle G okay and what what I've done is I just set up a very quick um, scene just zoom it in a bit just, what I'll do is I'll take this up there and yeah this scene is, is kind of cool isn't it it's very cartoony it's kind of an imaginary Martian world city with this big city thing in the background um, you can see I've just done it in Eevee to save time I've got AO ambient occlusion on it just to give it a bit of a bite with AO in Blender I usually crank it up quite a lot just to give it so you can see I've got bloom in the scene that looks like bloom there these these bits but this is actually just the building is shiny and I've the depth of field is helping me to do that and the screen space reflections if I select on camera and then I go to depth of field you can see even just using a depth of field some like dirty kind of meshy scene like this obviously from AI this time you can turn depth of field off and then you can see that's really confusing <laughs> And then with depth of field, it kind of works it out and it's focusing on the space person. So yeah, I can even crank up the depth of field even more like that. And um, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. Sorry, I just press Z zero and I'm gonna lock to camera, which you have to do in Blender all the time. And you know, if I can start moving around and it's kind of a very quick animation and it's done in AI and I just did that in about, apart from the time it took to generate the uh, models in the software in the in fondant, then it just take, no time at all to get these in so obviously it's a, it's a rival to buying stock meshes and depending on the price plans of these um, companies you know it may be better to get sort of models like this and as the AI models progress they'll be cleaner and um, more accurate and more sort of different styles as well I'll just come out of the camera and you can see these are all just the models really rough but you know rough models you can get away with a lot so there's a kind of Martian city with a space person and a shuttle in the background. Great, so let's just clarify what we were using here this time. So it's fondant and it's, um, let's go to the website, fondant.design. And that's how it stands at this moment on the 2nd of November, 2023. Obviously things evolve and I'll make a new video if things change um, with this and the, yeah. Okay, remember to subscribe to me, like my video, and you can also buy my book, um, How to Make Cities of the Imagination Using Maker Tools, Digital Tools, and Traditional Tools, and Everything Under the Sun, and that helps you with your creativity, unleash your creativity, and make an imaginary city. Thank you very much, and tune in later, especially as at the moment I'm doing a lot of um, 3D for AI, because it's all taking off in autumn 2023.